Okay, so uh, Dan, do you mind turning off the lights? Let's see how you did. I'm curious. I did. I did throw a lot of curveballs here at you. I, I get it. Uh, it was actually intentional, right? Are you reading carefully? So the first question is just a loan. Um, it's uh, for 55 grand, right? There's semi-monthly payments. So my payment should be 24. And then there's 72 months, which is the term. And you're like, what? Like it's not, right? Like it's compounded monthly, all right? So that should be 12. But what I did is I just turned the 72 months into years because I need it for N, right? You need years times PY. So that's where I get the 144, right? And then I plug in everything else. If this had been, if PY had been 12, that would have indicated monthly payments. You could have just inserted 72 right here, okay? But in this case, it was actually semi-monthly, so it's 24. So one mistake, you, you lose one mark. More than one mistake would be a zero, okay? <clears throat> so that's your month, semi-monthly payment right there. And so... Obviously, this will be different if you made a mistake. Don't take off marks, okay? We'll honor it. So how much interest after the first five? You have nothing. You have no option but to use this function here. So five years in this scenario would, would be five times 24 semi-monthly payments, right? So you got to go from the first payment to the 120th payment. This is the equivalent of five years that have gone by. <clears throat> and so that's how much interest. And so as, as long as you show me one, two, and this will be different, this will be 60. If you use PY of 24, this for you would have been 60. Right? And you will get a different number, that's all right. Just show me the entries. You still get, I will go step, check, right? Your steps are still consistent, you're good. Uh, determine the total amount he pays back for the loan, right? So you take all, this is N, right? You made 144 payments of 439 in my case, whatever your N is up in A, right? That is the number that goes here, times your payment. And so you always pay them back more than what you borrowed when, when you're all said and done. And the reason is interest, right? It's expected that we pay them more than what we borrowed. And um, there are two ways to figure out your finance charge or the total interest. You can just take the number I just calculated, subtract the initial loan from it, boom, right? Or you can use sum of interest. The problem, the problem with sum of interest is if you had to solve for N, and it's a decimal, you cannot use this. Then you must use this one, okay? And uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if I gave you a formula, but it would be N times payment minus present value, right? That's the formula. That's the formula. I don't know if you want to quickly, this is for loans, right? This is for loans how you find the interest. It's important that you distinguish investments and loans, right? Um, this would be how you do that, okay? And if there are no payments, then it's just P, right? Like it would just be PV minus future value, right? Like, um, there you go. So um, slightly different answers and that's okay as long as you show me the work. So this page is worth five marks. Don't uh, scratch this, this used to be out of two, right? We'll just make it worth one mark. It's worth one mark, that's all. So five for this page, okay, put a number down. <clears throat> it's important to me that you learn to put a mark down, right? So in this case, um, Isabel is correct, right? She disagrees, so option one will end up having more money since the frequency of deposits is greater. So when you have everything being the same, 
you kind of want to look at frequency, right? If this had been compounded uh, quarterly and this one monthly and everything else was kind of the same, then monthly wins, right? In this case, it seems everything is the same, but 50 weekly is better than 200 monthly. We often think that, oh, there's four weeks in a month, right? Boom, it's the same. But think of the whole year. If you do simple math here, 50 per week times 52 would be 26 a year, 2,600. 200 a month times 12 is 2,400. And you're like, uh, didn't you say don't calculate? Um, I meant like don't do the TDM solver, right, for each and figure it out that way. How would you be able to do it without going into the complex calculations? But this doesn't have to be there. Just make a mention that the frequency of deposits is greater for option one, right? The amount, the frequency makes a difference and also the fact that it is more that you're depositing if you go 50 weekly. So I would say always translate it to a yearly amount and then know for sure, right? And so since I picked option one, I did all the math for option one. So this is how much you have in your account. If you did, if you picked option two, watch up here, 69,373.85, right? But option one is this. The interest that you would have earned under option one is 23,000. The rate of return is interest divided by, what is this? Principal, right? This is principal. You made $50 payments over 1,040 payments, right? So this here is actually your principal, okay? And so it's over 50,000, so 44.53 or 44.37, it depends on which option you chose. Okay. And how much would you have after seven years? In my case, since I picked option one, it's seven years times 52, so I'm looking at after making 364 deposits, so the balance at after that many deposits would be 20,615 and 27 cents. Uh, you keep it. I'll give you, I'll, I'll have more. So uh, remember the video that I'm gonna post with regards to credit cards, and then we'll do loans and mortgages and kind of start wrapping things up.